you're sending dick pics to birds and getting knockbacks, and I says, I've, and I've, and I've got I've got birds subscribing to see my dick. Can you see my dick? Who's the fucking idiot, mate? You've got six figure PT. You've got this premises in here. You've got own clients. You've got only fans. You've got all these different things yep. that you do. What is your best income out of the world? So, all right, nice. Knew we were coming. Knew we were fucking coming. So today, we're on the road. We are here in sunny Motherwell. Not somewhere I go often, but there's an important reason why we're here today. We're here to meet my good friend, some of you might know him, he's pretty big online, Kirk O'Brien, or otherwise known as Mr. Aesthetic. So we're here at Aesthetic 13, this is his fitness premises here. Honestly, you know me, I'm already a big, strong guy, right? So I know my gyms. This is one of the nicest gyms I've ever been in in my life. I've been to like billion dollar hotel gyms, big massive fitness suites. This place will rival any gym in the world. And you know I'm all about multi six figure millionaire entrepreneurs. Look at the guy's car. Come on. Results don't lie. Beautiful area. This is second area actually. So today we're going to be discussing being a competitive bodybuilder. Not me, of course, I'm going to be asking the questions what it's like to train bodybuilders. Kirk currently has seven different businesses that he works on, so I'm gonna find out what he does to kind of manage his time, manage his schedule. Um, he's got some other interesting parts of his life, such as making a fucking killer income from things like OnlyFans and stuff like that. So um, let's go in, let's get chatting with Kirk, and we're also gonna see who's stronger, me or Mr. Aesthetic. Only fans, success story, you name it, this guy's done everything, so I'm gonna get myself changed up. We're gonna see who's stronger, we're gonna ask Kirk about his life and his business system. So, what do you, what, what are we training? Um, just go for a bit of chest. Go, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're <laughs> a smash ball and teeth out. So, Kirk, what would you say your first ever business was? My first ever business was a one-to-one -one personal trainer. Um, I was a qualified joiner by trade. Oh really? From, uh, yeah, I was a, I was a qualified joiner. Um, I worked for my dad's company oh, when I was younger. Oh, you fucking uh, miserable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was also a professional dancer as well. So like an actual, I was actually like actually, I, like, like, actually doing all the fucking actually, shit or like bow boot dancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually professional. Hip hop music dancer. I was on telly and dance for music artists, you name it, everything. But I was a professional dancer from like 16 to like 22 and I actually gave it up to do bodybuilding. Cool. Um, so, no, I loved that. That was more a hobby that turned into a career as well. But my actual main job was a joiner, but I absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it. Working in fucking cold and rain, miserable freezing on roofs, just. It Even as a sport, and I'm not, I'm not as out in the elements as you guys. Aye. Even when you're working in kits and stuff, yeah, but, it's oh, absolutely it's fucking, fucking terrible. Brutal, and I just absolutely hated it. And um, I actually moved to Australia when I was 20, um, and that's kind of where my bodybuilding slash gym kind of properly started. Do you, do you think, like, when I was younger, obviously I knew people who were into dancing. At my school, we had like gymnasts and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And I was always amazed that 13, 14 years old would be boys that were like the same age as me and yeah. solid. Yeah. Do you find that being a dancer made you, obviously you have to be physically capable. Yeah. Is that kind of when you looked at yourself and went, by the way, I've got a bit of a physique here, or were you training strength alongside doing that and that made you see it? No, what was the kind of... funny you should say that, because I actually done gymnastics alongside professional dance. Oh, fuck's it, so I know. actually helped with like, break dancing and stuff yeah, like that. So, um, so that kind of came hand in hand with it, which was pretty good and built a good foundation. But I was one of those skinny guys with abs. But I did have a good physique, but I just wasn't big. Back then, well, I'm six foot one. Back then it was nine stone, so you can imagine. How much do you weigh now, kilos wise? Uh, kilos, I'm about 
this is me, believe it or not, this is me small just now, so uh -huh. I'm probably sitting about 98, 100 kilos just yeah. now. But normally at my biggest, I'm about 106, so that's oh, about 17 stone roughly. That is mad, mate. I was yeah. kind of in like <laughs> 79, 80 just now, and I'm only an inch uh, shorter than you, do you know what I mean? So uh, it's, like, it's a big difference. I know, but, um, but as I said, it took me 10, 11 years to get to where I am now. I, so I people... can't believe I haven't found a cheat code yet to just say, <laughs> like, this is shite. There must be, is there a Yes Academy for me to just wake up one day and just be solid? I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> so basically now, We've got 20s on here. I'm not that strong. I've, I've been bullshitting you all, right? So if I drop this on my face, this will be a great clip for TikTok. <laughs> so right. obviously now, like, working back to front, you've got seven different businesses now, yep. right? Let me know, because I'm sure some of the younger guys will know. How much money is there in bodybuilding at your level? You've won how many shows? Uh, I've won 12. Right, and you'd have probably had sponsors and different kind of stuff uh, going on there? I did have a few sponsors, I, um, like mostly from like protein companies and stuff like that. I compete at the highest amateur level, so I've won every show in every federation and I compete at IFBB now or have been competing at IBD the last few years and that's the highest level of amateur bodybuilding and that's where you transition from amateur to pro. It's only where the federation you can transfer from amateur to pro. Yeah. So um, I've been kind of... So what you need to do is, to turn pro, you need to win your class and then win overall in your class. So you need to win... I guess there's like... We're in height classes the, or weight classes. Right, right, right. There. So, so it's like MMA in a sense, yes. your height, and your, uh, it's weight yeah. differentiating. So you need to beat everybody at your weight or beat everybody at your height. And then once you've won that, then you need to then go in to overall with all the other champions of the different weights or different height classes. So you, so you could be standing there, for example, you 6'1", what would you weigh on competition day? 94 kilograms. Right, so you're standing 94 kilo, 6'1", you win your category. Mm -hmm. But you could be standing beside someone who's 5'5", yeah. and they could be like a wee fucking tree yeah. star. And you still need to be better than all everybody. Of them. Or right. it could be again, someone who's 6'5", and weighs 105 kilograms. Oh shit. So, but normally I'm, I'm in the tallest class, so the tallest class is usually 6'1 and above. Or so six. you're probably the shorter so, side of that class? So I'm probably, yeah, so actually, yeah, to be fair, so you've got a, a B, C, D, E, and F. Right. F being the, the tallest and A being the shortest. So F class is over six foot one. So I am six foot one. So I'm on the short class. So I've been against guys at six three, six four that maybe got five to ten kilograms on me. Up, go on. Up, come on, let's go. Up, keep going. Come on. Up, let's go. Up, come on. Two more at least. Come on. Up, one more. Come on. Up. Yes. Woo! <laughs> I'm joining, I don't mean the six foot one class, I'm gonna be the least. <laughs> it's been fucking tough and it's and it's it can be so disheartening as well. Especially I've been at the highest level in my career for a long time now and I can't I, I, I don't get beat anymore and everybody knows me as well oh, fuck Kirk's competing, he'll win. And it has been like that for a while, but now that the level that I'm at, I'm just I'm I'm too good to be amateur, but I'm not quite good enough yet to be pro. Yeah, see, so I'm at this yesterday. You said that you're done competing. Is that a fact or is that how you feel just now? I, I'm a guy who always says never say never um, in life and that's just with anything. I, I, I hate to give up and, I, and I've never gave up netting and I've always achieved everything I want to achieve. Yeah, but yeah. right now where I'm at in life, I've done bodybuilding for the last like 11 years now and it, I've done probably 32, 33 shows in 11 years. I've probably done more shows than almost any other competitor about because I was doing up to between three and maybe eight shows a year for the last 11 eight years. Shows year. Eight shows a year is the most I've done. That's a toll on your body as well. It's a toll on your body and it's a lot of money and it's a lot of travelling. Like people don't realise how expensive it is to keep in bodybuilding. Yeah. When you've got from your your entry fee, your tan, your accommodation, your travel, and I don't just I don't just um, compete in Scotland. I, 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 I travel all over the world. All last year I competed in um, sorry 2021. I competed in Norway, Finland, London. Do you know what I mean? I've been to Spain. Yeah. Um, I've been all over the world, Denmark. So it's 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 a lot of money as well as and to get the end of it when you're amateur, there is no prize money. It's it's a I, trophy and that is that. And a bag of fucking protein. A bag of protein and that is generally what it is. So you're spending thousands of pounds to compete in a show to the end of the day to get a plastic trophy. But at the end uh -huh. of the day, it's about your own personal goal and your achievement and what you want to achieve. And that was my personal goal was to become an IFBB pro. But as I've got a bit older, circumstances have changed. Right now I'm just all about wanting to make money, travel the world and be a good dad. And that's all my that's all my kind of priorities right now. This is one of the things I always say, right? Obviously I fought MMA 
and I was in a transitional period from still fighting and training and thinking am I going to fight again but understanding I was never going to be top level yeah. and then starting the business right yeah. I want your opinion on this because you're someone who's in a unique situation that we can talk about this right mm-hmm. when I started knowing right I'm making 100 grand this year mm-hmm. I could not wake up and go I'm going to go to the cold gym mm-hmm. where I know I'm going to put my time in it's got no financial value because yeah. I might make two or three hundred pounds yeah. and I fight as an amateur mm-hmm. you now as I mean with a facility like this, the cars you've had, the business mm-hmm. involved you've got, you're a multi, multi six figure entrepreneur potentially yeah. more for all that, yeah. right? Do you find that your motivation has dropped as your income's increased? Yes. So you found that that came So down. I found that it shifted as the more successful I actually got and the more money that I made, the more businesses that I opened, I actually thought, I don't really need bodybuilding anymore because it's yeah. not bodybuilding that's making me become successful. It was good because it helped me to learn how to be disciplined and how, how to show me that um, you need to work hard for things in life if you, if, you, if you really want them. And bodybuilding really helped me make me the man I am today. I do not regret it in one single bit, but my priorities have definitely changed and I've come to realise that I don't need it to make money, I don't need it to get me clients, I don't need it to put my name out there because it's already out there now and I've got a name for it. So it's just generally just shifted and I feel like it's not a priority anymore. And I don't really see how it's going to benefit me in long the long term. run. Of course, of course. No. Yeah. I think one of the unique spins you've got, though, is that like you see so many PTs these days, right? And I'm pretty sure me and you've spoken this before, yeah. how things just pop out yeah. and they're like, oh, I'm a PT, I'm this and that, yeah. right? I think one of the unique spins you've got as a bodybuilder is as much as you can coach, you can coach anyone. You can get a physical result for anyone, right? But not every PT in the world can shoot someone on your limited pose. Because, yeah. like, people, I, I, I mean, I'm ignorant as well. Yeah. I think posing and bodybuilding is just. Yeah. Fucking stand like this, uh, like some fucking yeah, fairy, right? Yeah. But you, there's like a science to that, yeah. posing and how to actually mm. compete. I don't think every PT can do that. No, there's, there, 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 there definitely is. There's so many, so many PTs out there who have just come into the industry and be like, I'm going to be a competition prep coach, and you're just like, but you've never even competed. How can you, com- how can you train somebody how to compete in a show when you've never done it yourself, or even? Give them benefit doubt. They've maybe done one show. Even give them benefit doubt again. See, they've done two shows, and now they're now a competition prep coach. And that's like someone going in and doing their first fight, and then saying, "Right, I'm a boxing coach." Like, mate, you've, I've seen do you what? Know what I mean, it's, mate, I'm seeing it just now. Young people coming out and going, "Do you want to learn how to make six figures?" And it's like, I seen you in Tesco last week. You sold me a meal deal, mate. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what would yeah. you say is your most profitable enterprise? Because I've already seen this. Gave the audience a call, so you've got six figure PT, you've got this premises in here, you've got your own clients, you've got only fans, you've got all these different things yep. that you do. Mm-hmm. What is your best income out of the world? So, my, my main income and my best income is my online coaching. Online coaching, um, online coaching is a six figure business, yeah, man. Um, and alongside that, the gym's only been open a year, the gym's already uh, open a year and a half, sorry, and the gym is already a six figure business as awesome. well. But that is planning to go. Even oh, higher, yeah, sure. as as you know, as time goes on, as the years build up, gets more popular, blah blah. But yeah, my online coaching is definitely my highest income alongside the gym, and then my one-to-one personal training. That was not when I was doing that full time. It was not far off a six, six-figure business, um, but I backed off that to then to allow myself more time to focus on my other that businesses. Must be so hard, one-to-one coaching to six figures, like Aye. because if you're doing however much you're charging for an hour. Yeah. Like, that's the thing, when you're online coaching, you can be one person coaching 10,000 yeah. people. Yes. You're going to have so many people yes. coming through here. So, is, so to get yeah. even near six figures on an hourly basis... It was like, I was, doing, I was doing 12 hours a day, five, six days a week, and I was doing that for I was doing that for years and years and years, and that was the thing where I was, I wasn't quite... I was not far away from six figures. I was do, doing very comfortable, and that's when I realised I couldn't earn any more money as I went to one PT, because there wasn't enough, there was, I can't charge any more than the hourly rate I'm charging. I actually started online coaching way back, like, 2013, 14, I mean, but it was still kind of like... That's not that common, mate, no, like, no, like, back then, back everyone's then, an online coach I know, now, back, back, back then, then everybody was like, oh, how can you be a, how can you be a one-to-one coach and be online, and then I stuck Probably with it, and stuck like with it, and stuck with it, that. and, uh, <laughs> and um, by, like, by 2017, 2018, I started making really good money, to the point where I was matching what I was making one to one, so then I backed off the one to one slightly, which allowed me to then exceed the online, and I've just slowly done that. And um, but I was it's actually quite funny because uh, last year, the January last year, I was like really focused on the gym and mother business that I opened. And I was like, right, no more one to one. I want more time for myself that I can focus on doing more passive income businesses. Of course, of course. Um, and that was my and that and that was my goal, but. I got like two months in and I fucking could see myself fucking in the house watching fucking loose women and doing the dishes in the fucking Hoover and I'm just like, 
this is fucking not me, man. I was like, I need to get, I was like, I need to get back out there and start fucking interacting because I was yeah. just getting bored and fed up. So as I said, you only had to do a few hours a day on the laptop and on your phone, and then the rest of the day you were like, right, what do I do now? I've checked in with other business, talked yeah. in with my staff, like what's happening now. So I was like, do you know what? Just go back and do a wee bit of one to one again, just even for your own mental health, get and speak to someone. Well, and mate, like you've just said, them, right? Imagine, there's not many businesses you get this in, right? But imagine, let's say, like, A13 here has been a huge success. Mm -hmm. Let's say you want to open another premises in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. You want to go overseas, whatever, right? Now, you have a good relationship with your online clients. Mm -hmm. You've already just said to us, you've got a one-to-one -one client mm -hmm. that's running a net worth 180 million. Mm -hmm. Now, if that person's trusting you with their physical health and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, if those are the contacts you're making having a premises like this, mm -hmm. no offence, you're not going to get that in fucking jiving no, gym. Absolutely you, not, like, no. I'm not imagining no. somebody that's worth that going to yeah, pure gym, so, right? But I'm just being fucking honest. Yeah. So, contacts like that are invaluable. Yes. Because if you go to that guy and you go, look, you've seen the success of a premises mm -hmm. like this, you probably don't even have to, you've got enough money that you can open whatever uh, premises you want, yeah. but if you decided this guy's got strategic benefits mm -hmm. on you, you can go and say, look, I want you to come as a partner, mm -hmm. I've got you great physical results, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's get some great financial yes, results, mate. You're not... You might get someone on your online coach mm -hmm. there, someone that knows you one to one, yes, who I, comes to the gym, yeah. who, and mm -hmm. I find like PTs are often like barbers, and what I mean by that is, like when I go to my barber, he knows my fucking full yes, life. I, so see when you go to PT, yeah, yeah. that guy's gonna be like, oh, I'm not talking yeah, about this guy specifically, yeah. but people are like, oh, my missus on my back, or my boyfriend's doing my nothing. Yes, you get no, every part of people's lives, you know? And I actually met my mate that owns, um, owns this premises through one to one PT. So oh, I started no training way. him. Um, and then through that, I've met, met that were clients that are now one to one, um, one to one clients as well as now have turned into my pals that are all multi millionaires, and yeah. it's helped me learn and, and, and offer them where and where they've went wrong in business and how to be successful and all these different things. So being a one to one coach has been absolutely brilliant to meet so many like minded people. Right, imagine I'm standing here. We've got the keys to your gym, this full facility, what you've built here and what it can grow to. Yeah. And I've got a pro card with your name on it. You can pick one. So either you take the pro card and you go, you continue competing as a pro, uh, or you keep the gym and what you've built here. What would you choose? By the way, he doesn't know any of these questions. I don't give him <laughs> no predetermined answers. I'm sticking it on him here. What gym you would pick? Um, I would keep the gym and keep building what I'm building. Yeah. Absolutely, aye. And is that out of, is that an income thing, a passion thing, or both? I would definitely say it's both because it is my passion to run a successful business or any successful business, especially my gym, because my gym was my main thing that I'd always wanted to do when I was younger. So it's always been my dream to have a very successful gym. Yeah. Um, and it is my passion as well, which is which is obviously great. But as I said, bodybuilding it's a it's a it's a short it's a short um, career anyway. So yeah. within the next three to five years I'd be done with it anyway. So would I've gave up business and success and money for a very short career that realistically I know yeah, I'm in good shape to your, probably your average Joe and people might look up to me and think, oh, he's in great shape. And could I turn pro? Yeah, probably. But would I be a competitive pro? Probably not. Yeah. And I can be realistic with that and say say that I wouldn't be. So why pursue something that I know I probably wouldn't be that successful at? Because when you turn pro, you're down at the bottom of the pack again. I'm at the top of the amateur, which yeah. is good and it feels good. But you yeah. want to get to that pro, but if I go to that pro level, I'm just going to be back back down at the bottom of the pack again, and I know I don't have the genetics to be up there with the Olympians. So, What I, are your business, money type goals for the next 10 years? Um, it's funny you say that because every year it always changes because you achieve a goal and the goal yeah. exceeds or it goes to the next level Aye. and you're like, right, I've hit that amount of income. So that was like, I do, I'm quite believing in like um, a law of attraction and universe and um, I write down all my goals and all that stuff. I've done that for the last 10 years and I genuinely believe that. Because I write down, I will achieve this, I will make this amount of money. No I, hopes, no maybes, I, no, like, I, would I, like I will, to. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Write yourself a check, write yourself exactly what your income and I've always done that and that's always something that I've, I've believed in and it's worked in and every year I do achieve it. So every year it always goes up or it always changes. So it's kind of hard, but yeah, I, I, realistically, I would probably say, yeah, I would like to own maybe a few more gyms. Um, I'd maybe like got into another couple of industries, like maybe like the nightclub industry, um, cool. stuff like that. Um, 
But yeah, maybe like to open a few more gyms, but not in this country, definitely abroad. People always say to me, Richard, um, I've got a RS3. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a nice next car. What car should I get next? Mm -hmm. Like, what should I change my RS3 for? I'm like, your goals are wrong. Mm -hmm. You've got an RS3. What do you want to add to your garage? Aye, yeah. The same way, I wouldn't think to myself, oh, I'm going to sell everything to start a new life in Dubai or whatever. I'm yeah. going to be like, okay, I have my house in Scotland. I've got my cars in Scotland. Yeah. Now I need to get a car and a house in Dubai. Yes, I need absolutely. to get a car and a house in this country, yes. in that country. Yeah, so, absolutely. real success and like you've said there, mm -hmm. it's not about being geo-locked, yes. it's about having the freedom yes. to go, I can go to my house here, yes. or my house here, and my house there. Money gives you options and money gives you freedom and, and it does make you a lot happier, I don't care what anybody says, it's because 90% so of people's stress and problems out there is money um, and when you do have it, things become more, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, like it becomes, everything becomes accessible, everything's Aye. easy, everything's, uh, yeah, money comes with stress as well, do you know what I mean? But it's, um, it definitely, it definitely does help a lot. So obviously we've spoken about your professional business interest, right? Yeah. You being bodybuilder, coach, blah, 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 right? Some other people, if you're watching, may know you as Kirk. The OnlyFans guy, right? <laughs> so I don't know how you call it, OnlyFans model, I don't know, that sounds like a fucking new. So, how long have you been on that platform for? How do you find it? And how much, roughly, Jake, you've made from that platform? Okay. Aye, so, the OnlyFans was kind of started in lockdown, and it was just basically yeah. just to test the water and see kind of where it was at. And actually, at that time, I started seeing my new girlfriend, and she was actually quite supportive. She was like, fuck it, go for it, like everybody else is doing it. And it's I, actually quite big in the bodybuilding industry, especially for a female. That? Oh, it's massive, what? like absolutely famous. It's um, like people are in a lot of like muscle worship because of the body you've got. And it's you watch like, that Netflix thing about the woman that killed her yes, husband? I, she was like, doing the wrestling yes, videos I, or something. I, That's I, fucking um, mad. There was um, a bird that was built like you came up to me. I fucking <laughs> shot him back at me. I'd be like, get you scared the fuck out of me. You're gonna be mad. I need sneakier. I'm gonna let it out. I mean, I've had some, oh, some obscene messages and requests and stuff like that, but. Um, I've actually got a guy that runs it for me, so I don't oh, actually... Oh, like a fucking manager? Yeah, like a manager, what? I, so, um, so it's kind of, it's good that he helps out and it gets me, allows me to kind of just concentrate on other things as well. I'm not saying what I do on it, but it's, it's nowhere near as extreme as what I could go and how far I could push it. And as I said, I don't really promote it because Aye. obviously people will just relate to you, oh, you're just that fucking only fans guy and it doesn't look professional when you're in the, when, in the fitness industry, but that's, that's not just me, that's my profession is my profession and that's just a, a yeah. side thing. It does all right. Like it sits there, and I don't really need to do much, um, and um, maybe make a few grand a month off it. Um, I just call it my holiday fund, so I don't really actually touch. Fair enough, mate. Don't actually Fair touch enough. my it's own. Like a side hustle. <laughs> it's like a side hustle. So um, it's hilarious. so funny. I've had like guys mention like, "Oh, you selling your your ass and OnlyFans? Like, I can't believe you're doing that." Or this that, and I went, "Hold on a minute, mate." I said, "Like, let's get this straight." I said, "Hold on." You're sending dick pics to birds and getting knockbacks, and I says, and I've, and I've, and I've got, I've got birds subscribing to see my dick, paying to see my dick. Who's the fucking idiot, mate? I think the next two to three years, I think I'll be, I'll be laughing. In the next ten years, I'll hopefully be retired. I wouldn't say retired, but I think I'll ever retire. And I probably choosing do the what same. You want to do. But choosing what I want to do, and I think I'll still have businesses, but I'll have other people running them all for me. But yeah. I don't think you ever will retire because I'm too, I'm too, um, I'm too driven. I'm always, I'm always looking for the next best thing. And as you say, yeah. when you hit a target, you're like, right, that's good. Take a wee step back and then go, right, let's go again, let's go for it. And I've always kind of been like that, or whatever I've done. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, it's just kind of keeps you going and keeps you motivated but when I don't have a goal or I don't have something to focus on I just start going in a downward spiral and I end up in a bad place and yeah. so it's just the way I've been built and it's something that I need to keep doing it's just always been like look for the next thing the next thing and some people are like just enjoy it and relax and I'm like yeah I do for a certain amount of point but I need to then find my next thing to it's keep how you going. Keep motivated and how you, you just keep yourself going like yeah. I couldn't imagine me just sitting like going yeah. oh I've completed stuff I'd be sitting in the house going what text have I missed who have I not uh, emailed you yeah, know yeah. Like, yeah. go back to that 19, 20, 21 year old kids, mm -hmm. you back then, or the young men who are like you now, mm -hmm. what is the most important piece of advice you would give them that would make them reach their income goals, fitness goals, bodybuilding goals, stuff like that? My biggest bit of advice is, honestly, is take risks. Um, take risks, don't listen to the naysayers. If you genuinely believe that you're good at something, and you genuinely believe you'll be successful at it, fucking go for it. Don't listen to a single word that anybody says. And I probably held off longer than what I should have done 
and that is, I would probably be a wee bit further ahead if I actually didn't listen to people and I listen to friends, family, whatever, oh don't, it's a big risk, stick what you're doing, you're in a safe place, you've got a steady income every month. Yeah, I maybe did, but I'm living a below average or a very average life and I was never, never wanted that, to, to, to have an average life or be an average person and listen, if you're happy with that, that's great, if you're quite content with being average, then that's absolutely brilliant and I'm happy for you, that's great, but me personally, I didn't. So my biggest bit of advice is generally, if you genuinely believe in yourself and you think that you're going to be successful at it, fucking take the risk, don't listen to a single fucking person out there and just go out and fucking smash it. So today's episode of On The Road, I've been lucky enough to come here to this amazing facility, Aesthetic 13, with Mr Aesthetic, Kirk O'Brien. Now, if you want to find out more about Kirk in terms of joining the six-figure PT programme, you're a young person in the, the fitness space, you'll be able to find that down below. I'm going to put all the social media links in there. If you want to see his knob on OnlyFans, you can probably get that on there as well. <laughs> Kirk, thank you very much for being no, here today. Welcome, I appreciate it. It's been a great story. And I found out, actually, even as one of your mates, I found out a lot more about you today, which made me respect you even more mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur and stuff yep. like that. So hopefully you guys have got some value from this, and we'll see you on the next episode.